By the end of this tutorial, you are going to learn how to make this 3D printable hex shelf and as well as how to use the joints feature within Fusion 360. So with that said, let's get started. Welcome back to another tutorial and in today's tutorial we are going to cover how to make this 3D printable hex shelf within Fusion 360. Today we are in part 5 and in today's video we'll be covering certain topics that are extremely useful especially in the sketch environment. So let's quickly go over exactly what we're going to learn in today's video. The first thing we're going to learn is how to design this 3D printable hex shelf within Fusion 360 as well as how to use certain features within the sketch environment that are not only applicable to body but as well as to sketches. Additionally, we'll also learn how to use the joint feature within Fusion and actually create a slider joint within Fusion. And as well as if you haven't already, make sure to join the 3D printing community down below in the description as I release more tutorials and more content just like this to help you better your skills around 3D printing and around this hobby. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into Fusion 360 and get started. So here we are within Fusion 360. You should have a completely blank canvas. What we need to do is go ahead and create a component for our design. So by pressing Create, New Components, and let's go ahead and name this to 3D Printable Hex Shelf. After that's done, press OK. From here, we, what we need to do now is create a polygon for our design. So we can go and click on Create Sketch, select this bottom plane. From here, going back to Create, going to Polygon, and then selecting circumscribed polygon. From here, what we want to do now is selecting the very, inner, very center or origin of our design and just drag it up to about 55 millimeters and making sure when you do drag it up, it's going straight up in a vertical direction uh, with this line right here in the middle. So you'll kind of feel it snap on to the plane within our canvas. After that's done, press OK. Now what we need to do now is extrude our profile. So by pressing E on our keyboard, selecting this profile and extrude this up to about 55 millimeters, press OK. Now you should have something that looks a little bit like a polygon. From here, what we can do now is create um, some slots here for our design and as well as some hooks. That way we can actually connect these pieces together. So where we want to create these hooks here is going to be at the very top, the sides, and that's pretty much it. Where the parts where we slide them in, is going to be opposite of that. So if this part has a hook, this part has a slot. If this part has a hook, this part has a slot. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So in order to create this, we need to go ahead and create a new sketch. And from here, we'll be sketching on this top face here. Now, by selecting the very center of our design, you should see a triangle popping up within your canvas. Select there, drag this up to about three millimeters. Continue on create one more line. Let's make this 15 millimeters. And then from here, let's go ahead and just drag this down to anywhere on this line. And we'll go ahead and set a dimension for that. So by pressing D on our keyboard, let's go ahead and select this dot here and this dot here. And let's set this to about 10 millimeters. From here, since we have this uh, sketch or profile that we created, we also want to create a fillet for this corner here. Now, one cool thing about fillets is that we can create a fillet on a body, but we can actually create a fillet on a sketch as well. So by pressing S on our keyboard and typing in fillet, we'll select this line here, this line here, and we'll create this fillet all the way to about 0.75 millimeters. That way, when our 3D printer is printing this design, it should have no issue um, compared to what we had previously with the sharp edge. But set this to 0.75 millimeters, press OK. From here, you should have your entire sketch fully constrained. And what we want to do now is mirror this sketch onto the other side. So by pressing S on our keyboard, typing in mirror, you should see we have two options. We have the mirror, mirror sketch option and the mirror body option. What we want to select is the mirror sketch option and select these three lines that we just created. Selecting the mirror line, the mirror line is going to be that little center line that we created as well. And press OK. Now, if we were to take a better look at our model with this sketch, what we want to do now is create this sketch and extrude this all the way to the other side of our design. So by pressing E on our keyboard, what we want to do now is the extrude option dialog box should pop up. And what we want to do is change the extent type to object. Now the reason why I did this or why I'm mentioning this is that for example if the size of our design ever changes, meaning that if the height of this design changes, this will stay congruent with the 
the height of the design as well. For example, if I were to just extrude this and select the other side, if the height of it were to change, it would not extrude accordingly to the other side. So for example, let me just show you what this looks like. So if I were to select that sketch we just created, so pressing E on our keyboard, selecting this sketch here, to object, and there we go. Now forever moving forward, regardless of how tall this is, this will always be extruded all the way to the very bottom of our design. So the next step in this process is to go ahead and create this hook all around our design here. So in a previous video, we actually use a feature within Fusion that allows us to replicate or duplicate features around a certain area within our design. So we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for this design. So by pressing S on our keyboard and typing in circular pattern, we can go ahead and use that feature here to replicate this feature onto the entirety of our design. So like mentioned early on in the video, we want to go ahead and duplicate this feature onto the opposite sides of this design. So by selecting this feature on our timeline and then selecting the axis, we can go ahead and select our axis, which is the origin, uh, or selecting using our origin using the Z axis. We can go ahead and create two more additional patterns within our body that we just created. From here, what we want to do is select identical as our compute type and select OK. Now we have a total of three new hooks on our design. And now what we need to do is go ahead and complete the entire process for this by creating some slots for these to fit right into. So from here, let's go ahead and using the create sketch option or the create sketch um, feature within Fusion. So create sketch, selecting our face again. And let's go ahead and repeat this exact same process. But the only difference here is that we are going to use slightly different measurements in order to keep up with the clearance for this design, especially when it comes to 3D printing. So by pressing L on our keyboard, we'll go ahead and select the very center of our design. So you'll see a triangle pop up, drag this out, and I'll put this out to about 3.1 millimeters. After that, drag this out, let's just say 15.5 millimeters. And then lastly, selecting our line here, setting a dimension for these two points here, and this would be 10.5 millimeters. Additionally, we'll also set a fillet for this, this side here, and I'll go ahead and leave this exact same as the previous one, 0.75, and there we go. From here, let's go ahead and mirror this sketch onto the other side, selecting our center line, press OK. Now we have this newly created sketch in which we can extrude this onto the other side. So doing the exact same thing, pressing E on our keyboard, selecting the sketch, selecting the, the extent type to object. Let's go ahead and select the other side and then press OK. Now you should have three sides with this hook and one side without it. Now additionally, what I probably would want to add to this is probably maybe a small little fillet here since this corner is quite sharp and I just want to avoid any issues when it comes to 3D printing this corner here. So from here, let's go ahead and select these two edges and maybe put a radius, let's say 0 0.1, let's see what that looks like, 0.25, and there we go. So the next step in this process is to go ahead and use the circular pattern feature in order to recreate this exact same feature onto these other sides. So by pressing S on our keyboard, typing in circular pattern, let's go ahead and select these two features that we created within our timeline using the axis, which is going to be the Z axis from our origin. And from here, what we need to do now is go ahead and select the compute type to optimized. Okay. Once that's done, press okay. And now you should have, three new created slots for our hex shelf that are essentially ready to go, ready to be 3D printed and ready to be used. Now, additionally, what we need to do is create some sort of uh, hole in here so that way we can actually put stuff inside. So what we could do is there are a couple of ways we can do this. We can use the shell option with Infusion, which gives us a little bit more of a thinner design, or we can create an offset so if we offset this, we can create a design like that. That's kind of uh, close to what we created here. So it kind of matches that. Or what we can also do is just create another polygon. Selecting the origin, dragging this out. I'd say about 50 millimeters, maybe a little more. But 
pressing E on our keyboard, extruding this down, so this would be negative 50. And now we have our fully 3D printable hex shelf. Now additionally, what we want to do with this design is using the joints feature within Fusion, kind of get a, sim or a simple animation as to how this will look like if we were to actually use this in the real world. So for example, in order to do this, let's go ahead and create a, or duplicate this component within our Fusion 360. So from here, what we want to do is go to copy, go to our top component here, right clicking that, paste new, and now you have a completely new component within Fusion 360. And let's go ahead and move this off to the side just a little bit. And now you have two components that are totally separate from each other. So you can make changes to each one and it will not affect the other. So now what we want to do now is using the joints feature within Fusion 360, we want to get a simple animation as to what this looks like if we were to connect these two pieces and how it would look like if they were sliding in and out. So what we need to do now is create a simple animation as to what this would look like if we were to actually 3D print it and exactly how they would slide into each other. And as well as making sure that there is enough clearance for these two to fit into each other. So by pressing S on our keyboard, typing in joint. From here, let's select this little side profile of this or this face of this uh, hook that we created by selecting the center. Let's go ahead and select the other side or the other object, the other component, selecting the center of that. And now Fusion will automatically connect these two pieces. Now, as of right now, there is no animation set up for this design. What we need to do is set up a motion for this. So from here, if we were to go to motion, selecting the type to slider, now Fusion 360 will create a sliding animation for our design. But as of right now, you can see that the Z axis is taking this design in a totally different direction. What we want to do is find out which direction fits our needs. So from here, let's try out the X axis. Nope, that's not it. And from here, let's try the Y axis. And that's what it looks like if you were to create a fully 3D printable hex shelf and as well as creating joints within Fusion 360. Once that's done, press OK. And now these two pieces are pretty much hooked on together and you can kind of play with this little feature here that allows you to slide it in and out. And as well as if we take a closer look, we can see that there is some clearance for these two to fit into each other, giving it some, pay, some space. And there's a little bit of space in between here. So if you were to print these, these would slide into each other with no issue. So with that said, that pretty much wraps up today's tutorial for this design. So what we can do now is also take this, save as mesh, import into our slicer, And there you go. Additionally, if you wanted to scale this up, you can also change the dimensions there. So let's just say if you want it a lot larger, now it is quite larger for fitting anything you want within your home, office, or wherever. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section, as well as if you want access to the STL files for this project, there'll be a link down below. You can join the group and there will be access to the STL files within the group. And as well as if you guys have any questions or need clarity on anything so far or any of the videos as well, make sure to drop it down below as I'll make sure to take that feedback and make these videos better. But with that said, this is Brandon signing out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.